Nine heading one eight five, reduce speed one eight zero knots. One eight five on the heading one eight zero on the speed off air zero zero seven. Speed at one two four, reduce speed one six zero knots to forty a minute. Well there guys, Matt here, hope you're all well, and welcome back to another P3D video. Yes, we are still using P3D, nothing else. Although the rumours and then later confirmed new simulator from Microsoft apparently is just around the corner, so maybe uh, in the not too distant future it will be hello and welcome to another Flight Sim 2020 video. Anyway, I hope you all had a great Christmas, or if you don't celebrate it, a good uh, holiday break. And uh, a good new year as well, of course. Start of a brand new decade. Although some people are arguing the case that technically it shouldn't be a new decade until 2021. But I'm um, still yet to find a logical explanation for that. So there we go. It's been a while since I actually sat down and, uh, and, and uh, used a simulator. Never mind made a video. I mean, the video is probably about two or three months ago. But uh, I've not really been using the sim much i've had a lot going on that um although is is to do with flight sim i've not actually had the time to just sit down and fly which is something that is uh it bothers me because <laughs> that's what i started out doing and for some reason as time has gone by i seem to be doing less and less of it which is uh is not good i suppose but hey needs must etc in my little hiatus over Christmas, over New Year, I've kind of figured out a few things. Um, the biggest one for me is the whole, like, burnout thing. Um, you hear a bit about people burning out all day long. It's, it's uh, you know, humans are humans, and we can only do a certain thing for a certain amount of time before it gets too much. And what I was actually doing is I was burning out repeatedly, but instead of when I burned out, instead of you know, actually doing something about it and taking a break and going doing something completely different so I could reset, recharge, you know, the batteries, etc. Um, I would re... Oh, I, I, would, I would stop doing certain things, but I would continue doing other things which were still directly linked to what I was burnt out from in the first place. So, for example, if I got burnt out making videos, I would, instead of just saying, okay, I need to take a week off, or I need to take two weeks off to just stop and not touch anything that is related to videos, I would still stream, or I would still uh, fly, you know, not on video, or I would still do something that is related to, I don't know, Project Fly or something. What I've learned over the last couple of, uh, a couple of weeks to a month is that a break for me needs to be an actual, a, a, a legitimate sort of, the walls come up, I stop doing anything associated with that specific activity until I've sort of reset, recharged, and then I can come back. Because now I'm back uh, after, I think, honestly, the last time I used a sim, I reckon maybe two weeks before Christmas, so probably second week of December. And we're now second week of January. So yeah, it's been about a month. Uh, of not touching um, the sim, and then probably for the last three weeks, not really touching a computer. Um, it's it's really, I, I've missed it, and, and that is something that I've not felt in a long time. And so coming back and sitting down, it doesn't feel like a burden, it feels like something I want to do. And thus, uh, you know, uh, why, why would you do something if you don't enjoy it? And that's, you know, how I started to do all of this. And uh, over time, you know, the pressure just got in its own right uh, a little bit too much and uh yeah so there that's 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 my sort of matt's realization for 2020 okay so with that in mind um i have not really been keeping up to speed with what's gone on in terms of flight sim related stuff uh i purchased this which is the fs labs a321 um, I think it was about four or five days ago, but I didn't really do anything with it because I've, I've been uh, otherwise occupied uh, with the, um, uh, well, with the plan of streaming it, but then I've still not streamed anything yet, so it's been sat on my computer not doing anything. Uh, so I was like, you know what, let's just do something like the old school videos where I would sit down with a product that I've never used before and I would kind of give it uh, you know a sort of first look first impressions whatever you want to call it 
uh, just to see what sort of quirks and, and what cool stuff it has, what less than cool stuff it has. Um, uh, granted, it's, you know, it's in a product line of planes that we've used before, so it, you know, follows suit from the A320 and the A319 from FS Labs, but the A321 in its own right is, is you know, it's a little bit different. Uh, there's definitely a lot of uh, characteristics that are different. Uh, it's bigger <laughs> for a start. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's certain things you have to watch out for when you're flying it around, so I'm told. Uh, so, yeah, I, I figured that we would just chill out, fly from here, which is Heathrow. And we're going to whiz this thing up to Edinburgh in, uh, in Scotland. Uh, another thing that came out, which is something I'm actually pretty excited about, although with the weather today, uh, maybe not get to see it as much as I would have liked, um, but True Earth from Orbex now covers all of the UK. Uh, I have an X-Plane, and an X-Plane, it is phenomenal. I hate using that word, but it's, it is very, very good in X-Plane. Um, and I was always skeptical of it coming to P3D because P3D's rendering capability of, of you know, like long distance terrain and textures and stuff like that is uh, less than ideal. But uh, I, I, I got all three parts and um, installed them all and they're ridiculously big in size. And uh, I'm hoping that from here all the way to Edinburgh because we have True Earth South, Central and North and then FTX Scotland and then uh, FTX, uh, not FTX, Orbex Edinburgh, the actual airport itself that we will have some pretty damn nice scenery all the way up there. So that's why I chose this route. Uh, I mean, the, it just seemed to be the best fit for uh, for what I wanted. So hopefully as we get a little bit further north, the weather will clear up um, using real world weather. So uh, I actually have tried to fly in real life uh, for the last three or four days, uh, just general aviation flying and we've not been able to because uh, the weather is absolutely atrocious. Some sort of Storm Brendan, I think it is, or Brenda, or Bilbo. I, I don't know the name of it, but it's uh, it's causing some problems. In fact, it caused me a massive problem yesterday. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, physics maybe is, is something to do with this, but um, it was really windy outside. I had all the windows and doors in my house closed. I then went to leave my house about 7 p.m., and I opened my front door, and the wind went like inside the door, blew it open, and it was like something out of Harry Potter where it like swirled around the entire inside of the house. And the bathroom that is furthest away from the door upstairs, somehow the wind got all the way up into the bathroom and destroyed everything that was on the cabinet. Like my deodorant, my, my uh, cologne, my mouthwash, uh, my toothbrush, my toothpaste, it just went everywhere, so. That was some uh, that that was some wizard shit right there. That was that was impressive. Anyway, that's about as much fun as I've had with the weather. So I've done all the flight planning and uh, I did it through PFPX because why not? It was easy at the time. I'm gonna it's it's another video. This whole project fly thing. Honestly, I could talk about it all day, but I don't really want to. Um, as time goes by over the next probably month or two, you'll see me use. Um, the new version of Project Fly uh, with all the dispatcher quirks and all of its fun or new funkiness, new features, new funkiness, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but for now, I'm just sticking with, with PFPX. Um, and that is a very big plane. Good old A380. Oh, God, that's going to set off some questions now, isn't it? No, it's not ready. That's all we're saying. So, yeah, all the flight planning is done. It's on my other screen. I'm going to try and use this Atsu feature that the FS Labs has. Uh, the traffic behind, by the way, is Ultimate Traffic Live. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of you already know this, I guess, uh, I will not be going on that sim anymore because they perma-banned me. Um, and as much as people love to speculate as of the reason why, no one actually knows. Uh, they have not communicated with me the reason for the ban. Uh, it's been way over two months now since they banned me. I've tried sending various members of Atsim um, emails, um, but but sadly to no avail. So uh, maybe that will warrant some sort of investigation further down the line. Um, but for now, just know that uh, if you see traffic, it's not uh, it's not online traffic. It's just uh, ultimate traffic 
like AI traffic, basically. So yeah, there's all the disclaimer stuff out of the way. All right, so um, first things first, I reckon if you have used the A320, A319 before, uh, something that is uh, new to the 321, I'm sorry if the performance is a little bit shaky, it always is here at Heathrow, and then you get out of it and it's fine. Uh, but for the 321, you can see if you look, uh, well, not really, you don't really need to look closely, but if you just look, uh, it's all PBR'd, aka uh, physically based rendered textures. So, you know, metal looks like metal, glass looks like glass, plastic looks like plastic, etc., etc. Uh, they applied this to the 320. I have no idea if they've done it. Sorry, they applied it to the 321 even. I have no idea if it is on the 320 or the 319. I have installed the updates for them, but I've not actually looked at them. So uh, maybe it has, maybe it hasn't, or maybe they have, maybe they haven't. I have no idea. I've noticed one thing already, though. Normally, if you jump into the Airbus and you're parked at a facility that supports GSX, which this does, as you can see, the jetway is out at the moment. Uh, if you go into the VC and then you go down to the radio, um, you can turn the uh, selector to intercom, like so. And when you do that, it should pop up with the GSX window. And it's not doing that. So I don't know why that is. I feel like maybe I'm missing something, but I've done that about a million times in the A320 and the A319, and it always works. So that's interesting. So maybe we'll find weird and wonderful quirks as we go on. Look at the rain effect on the uh, the glass. That's very nice. That is really nice, actually. I didn't realize uh, it was done that well. Uh, okay, so let's see if this Atsu stuff works. I will go on the overhead panel, and the external power is already on, which is fine. Um, I will turn on the ADIRSs like so. Yes, I've actually never looked at the difference between an A319, 20, and 21 overhead. I'm just seeing if I can see any real difference. There probably is something, but I just don't pay that much attention. If you, uh, if anyone knows of, you know, the actual, like, comparison between uh, the 320 and this, that would be pretty cool to see. I'm sure as we go along, we'll pick the stuff up. Um, I suppose it all depends on what carrier options they have too. All right, so that's that. Let's go down here and we'll go to the FMGC. And we'll go here and then we'll go to init A and we'll stick the call sign in, which is shuttle eight golf, like so. And then we should be able to do an init request. No answer to request. Okay, well, maybe not. Let's try it a different way. MCD menu, uh, Atsu, then AOC, then init. Let's try it this way. Shuttle 8 Golf. Um, and then EGLL to EGPH. And the time on route is uh, 49 minutes. And we'll throw some random stuff in this. So my crew ID is my initials and then my date of birth. And then I always stick a random one. The co-pilot, you could fill all the rest in if you really wanted to. I don't really care. Right, let's see what happens if we throw that in. All right, so it has initialized. We're back here then, let's see what happens. No answer to request. Well, let's try this one. EGLL EGPH. Oh, there we go, found it. Now we can use that one. Um, I wonder if I press it again if it's going to scream and shout. No answer. Right. There's obviously some weird stuff going on there. Uh, anyway, the alternate is Glasgow. I know that much. Um, and the cost index, I'm just going to use 20. And we are cruising at a grand total 
of 32,000 feet for level 320. Now if I go uh, back to MCD menu, Atsu, and then AOC, and then put the stuff in here, uh, we can put the zero fuel weight in and everything. So block fuel is going to be 5,500. Taxi fuel is going to be 120. And the trip fuel is going to be 2,500. Uh, I'll stick one in there. And zero fuel weight is going to be 71.5. Uh, STD is 1501 uh, yeah that's fine uh, refuel via GSX that's good and then we'll send oh it did it okay good now we can't do a ATC request because not on VATSIM. We will, however, do a departure request from Heathrow. Two seven uh, left. Okay, so it's very wet. The surface wind is two one zero degrees twenty knots. The temperature is 12 degrees the pressure is 993 low pressure uh, intersection departure no anti-ice uh, no packs can stay on wet look at the next one okay so we're looking at takeoff weight 76.5 and then the MAC tow, uh, I'm just going to assume it's like 32, something like that. Uh, tow good not needed, and then that's that. So that will send that off, and it will queue it up, perfect. And then we can look for weather if we really wanted to, but we can't do that at the moment. Uh, that's fuel report, we don't need that for now. Uh, boarding is, there's a zero fuel weight, 71.4, which is good. And then the request to do it is like so, so we can go, see I could do instant or I could just do board now, hmm. I'll do board now and then request and let it do it all, it should come up with a menu, yep yeah, there you go, requested, okay so if we go to receive messages, oh here we go, we have, what the hell, I don't know where it's getting this ATIS from, maybe it's getting it from VATSIM, even though I'm not on that sim. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but whatever. Um, what were they using in real? Departure 27 right, and I th threw in 27 left. Whatever, we're still going off 27 left. Uh, okay, here we go. Slot no notification, Heathrow, Edinburgh, blah, 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 blah. This is all just like generic messages. Nothing, nothing uh, other than that. Right, let me load Project Flee. Uh, Project Fly, here we go. I don't think I have this A321 in my fleet, so I will add that very quickly. Uh, fleet, add new aircraft, A321. Oh, there's Neos and everything. Anyway, uh, BAW, but it's actually, I wonder if we've got, yeah, we do, nice. Um, G, and then what's the reg on this again? E U X H E U X H E throw and then we'll just whack that in. Make a booking E throw and then one four four zero is the uh, is the flight number or it should be. There it is. Uh Shuttle Lake Golf, that's the one. One four four zero, that's fine. Flight scheduled IFR. Uh, and offline. Book and dispatch. Paste the route. And the route I have 
on the other screen, which is here. Paste that. Dispatch. Fly now. And there we go. Okay, good. So that's all set. We'll see ourselves on the radar in just a minute. Performance has come through. Uh, we can use this other FMGC to stick right. that in. Thank you. Uh, so 27 right. A departure via umlat. It's already in there. That's good. I can actually put these weights in then. So 71.4. And 32, and then 5.5 is going in block. Okay, so, uh, wait, what have I done here? 2 7 left. I might just re request it for 2 7 right, you know, because it's done 2 7 left. No, I won't. Let's just do 2 7 left. Um, that one golf. All right, so two seven left. Packs on. Anti ice off. Blah 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 blah. Uh, stab trim is one down, so we're going to be using um, one one down like so. Uh, and that's full length flat one flex. Uh, why can't I see this? Flex 46, I think that's what that means. So I'm a bit of a... Yeah, because clean would be 224, and yeah, flex 46, okay. And that gives us 136, 152, and 155. Uh, thrust reduction is fine. I'll just stick the acceleration at 3k just to get up and out. And that's all done. Now we basically have to wait for all of the boarding and stuff to be done. We'll turn the flight directors on. Set the initial altitude, constraints, airports, all of the above. Oh, that is very American. Don't know why that's that, but there you go. Have a look what's going on outside. 747 in the background doing its thing. The fuel is here. And then we will just leave that to uh, do its thing. These nav lights, though. That must be a bug with P3D or something, the way it like renders the bulb. Trying to do omnidirectional stuff, but fails big time. Okay, so turn the fuel pumps on. We will start the APU. We are not too far away from being ready to go. Flick the Atsu onto the other side. In case I need to do anything with that, flap open. All the baggage is almost complete. OK, 
Okay, APU is available. Let's connect the external power. Now, what we can actually do, I think there is a way of viewing what's going on out back. But I can't remember how you do it. Ah, there you go. That's what, there you go, you can see the passengers getting on. That's so cool. So that's the lavatory. Well, that's just getting into the aircraft, actually. There you go, you can see them all boarding. Just walking through each other as you do. That's a really nice feature. Although I'm not sure BA would approve of the FS Labs branded carpets in their planes, but hey ho. I've actually no idea how you use this little mini panel. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. Okay, so. Let us uh, get out of here. <clears throat> Beacon light on. Check everything is clear of the aircraft. I don't know why the door's coming back, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? Hmm. It's all going wrong today with GSX. Why is it doing that? Right, let me, uh... Ah, here we go. Just waiting for the menu prompt. Very good. Okay. Departure check completed. Bypass pin inserted. Release parking brakes. Okay, parking brake release. Commencing push. All engines clear. Nah, it's quite a long taxi, so I'm probably going to start just uh, engine number one first and then taxi out on one engine, and then we'll start number two a little bit closer to the runway. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to brief you on the safety procedures of this aircraft. We ask you to remove your personal headphones until the end of the safety brief. All handheld devices, including mobile phones, must now be in flight safe mode or must now be switched off and stowed away safely. As a reminder, smoking is not permitted at any time whilst on board. If you do have any questions, please ask a member of your cabin crew. Okay, we'll start engine number one. Hello. We'll now demonstrate the safety features on this aircraft. Please pay attention, as these may differ from an aircraft that you've flown on before. Gladly. Waiting your confirmation for the engine start. Whoa. 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 Yeah. Right. 
Tow truck disconnected. Bypass pin removed. It must be worn whenever the signs are on, and it's fastened and adjusted like this. And opened like this. Brilliant. That's it. Okay. Let's get a selfie. Come on. Right now. Come on, let's get a selfie. I mean, let's normally I'll be on the upper side. No, this thing. is my best side, so we should probably stick with that. But let's say you're smoldering, mate. It's just spicy. We can dimmer down. No, but you're right. Yeah. Black one. Just let them throw on the left. Maybe more if someone to buy. Left is clear. Right is clear. Yeah, I'll give you this. All right. Cabin air supply fails. Oh, oxygen will be down. Like this. Red left. And red right. And we want to go down by Raise one. Over your mouth and nose, like this. And breathe normally. Down by one. With a pedal. What I need for fuel is a little bit of taxi light. Turn off light. Your life jacket is underneath or this sun. Okay. That's us now ready to taxi. Parking brake released. Upright position with armrest down and your table the is power. pointed away. If seated by a window, please ensure the blind is open or it is set to clear. See, there we go. That's more your level. Well done. Guys, the rector is parched. Where is my coffee? Oh, there we go. Thank you, darling. Cappuccino, your portion. Okay, so we're just passing Terminal 2, oh sorry, Terminal 3 even, towards Terminal 2. We will uh, start engine number 2 now. While it's rolling. Oh, nice, an A321 just landed. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not it's two coming online. So the auto brake to max on the spoilers. Thank you, Hannah. Okay. 
Okay. Two good engine starts. TR8. Overhead. Turn the electric pump off. APU off. Should we take off? Oh, wait, hang on. I have to go to wait for the oil temperature. Or the, uh, yeah, the temperature to come up. It won't take long. Actually, if I press it again, it might be okay. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Traffic on short final, and then we'll get out of here. Hey. too far. Right, start the timer. Power's coming in. Man flex 46 SRS, etc. Order thrust blue. Already absolutely tanking down the runway. Performance is terrible, but whatever. Past 100 knots, it will get better. It's V1. And rotate. Bloody hell. Straight into that crosswind. That's great. Gear up. You see the FMA is there you go, it's more it's more like it. Okay, climb thrust. For the pilot. Disarm the spoilers. Everything else looks good. Flaps on the A321 versus the A320 and the 19 just they look like absolute units. The wing flex, that's so nice. Alright, passing 3,000 feet, and we'll now accelerate. We're gonna cancel the sit out all the way up to flight level 320, open climb, pitch forward. Oh, of course, because I changed the SID, didn't I? So I have a discontinuity. But that's fine. We'll just do that, like so, and then we're good. Okay. Flaps up. Goes the slats. Lights, if anyone can see us in this viz anyway. Uh, 
it'll look epic when we eventually break out. I'll set the standard now, once, twice, three times. That looks so nice with the PBR. Damn. I feel like they updated the animation frame rate with the A321. Versus the 319 and the 320. It just looks like, if you look at the ailerons and the flaps and everything, just they move so much smoother. Maybe I'm just, it's like a placebo effect, I don't know, just, but it does seem that way. Very, very fluid. Even the finer, like, the finer movements is where you really notice it. And just like that, what goes up must come down. Very quick flight, been in the air for 29 minutes. And I've still not done the arrival. Well, I can't have a little bit. So what we'll do is actually, we'll kickstart the descent so it doesn't miss the profile. Let's do that for 260 for now. And then we'll go here, Edinburgh, arrival, and then ILS 24. And we are in via V. Uh, Tweed... No, not Tweed. No, it is Tweed. Tweed 3 Alpha. That one there. It goes Eskdo, then Tartan, then Tweed. Spins around the hold for as long as you need. That was not meant to rhyme, but it did. All right, so minima for runway 24, ILS approach is 106. Two one zero degrees, nine knots. Raining, five degrees. Nine at eight zero. And we'll keep it like that, and we'll use auto brake low. Uh, we started that descent a little bit prematurely there. That's fine. We'll just let it go down. Um, MSL, so we'll just do 9-0 at Tartan, and then we'll just self-vector from Tartan. Beautiful night now, we're uh, above the weather, that sun over there looks fantastic, absolutely beautiful. Not really been able to see much of the scenery for the cloud, but it is down there, you can kind of see that that is definitely not default stuff. Maybe I'll do like a VFR type video one day over it all and see what it's properly like. But uh, this was more about just getting back into the sim and rekindling my love. 
I'll turn some lights on in here. I think they're already on, to be honest, but I feel like it could be a little bit brighter. There we go. Right. Seatbelts on. Notch your volume up. Fuel below three tons. Just above three tons, actually, but never mind. And that's us set. Okay, so we are over Tartan. Let's whack it into heading mode and we're going to aim for the center fix, give or take. A little bit to the right. And we'll descend down to 4,000 feet initially. Still in the soup, as they call it. Seatbelts are already on. Might widen that up a bit, actually, make it 015. Set the pressure now, 980, like so. Auto brake low. That is a storm. Look at it. Damn. <laughs> Surprised the weather radar is not picking that up.
turn us a little bit more to the right. Need a few more miles for this, I think. There's 10 miles to go. Uh, I'll whack it into approach mode now, and then I can start bringing out the spoilers. Slow us down a little bit. Also whack on the landing lights. See them come on now. There they come. We'll go down to 3,000, but we'll go into BS and then just like 400 feet a minute will do for now. Bring the spoilers in to about half just so we can knock that speed on the head a little bit. Okay, I'm happy to make the left turn. 330 degrees will do. Decrease that. And now we'll bring the spoilers all the way back in and arm them. And we'll go for flat one. Still can't really see anything. get there in the end. Alright, continue the left turn to a heading of 290. And then even further, 270. And then we'll close the localizer on that heading. I'm going to go with flat two. There's flat two. And keep the speed at 180 knots. Localizer. Just use the rest of the VS to get onto the glide, which will happen very soon. Might have to knock that down to 2,000 feet a minute. Just fix that. 10 miles to go. Diamond is almost here. There we go, got the glide. Both autopilots can come on. We can push the speed in. We can now slow itself down under its own momentum or lack of. Nine miles to go. will be fancy and we'll put the wipers on because <clears throat> they actually work I'm actually going to just stop that speed at 165 for now slowed down way too fast ok, 7 miles to run Approaching five miles to run, gear down. And watch that from the outside. Flat three. The 
last flat, flat full. Okay, looking good. Just approach altitude. Set. My aircraft. There's a long plane this, so you've got to be careful that when you flare, you don't smash the tail into the ground. And I've actually never flown this before, so this is a first landing for me. It was also a first takeoff for me back at Heathrow, so... Just got to be gentle with it, but the flight dynamics... They, they seem to be so much more fine-tuned with the 321. It feels great. I don't feel like I'm fighting it all the time. It just kind of flies where I want it to go. A little bit high. I think there's some traffic on the runway, but I think it's rolling, so we should be okay. Sinking a little bit there, though. Ooh, watch out. Okay, we're good. Good. One hundred. Fifty. Hundred above. Retard. And we're down. Beautiful. Reverse is green. Spooky arrival. Stow the reverses. Manual brakes. Get the pedals ready to use. Vacate this next left. As we basically use the entire runway. That was impressive. It's wet as well, I'll be why. I didn't even think about that, to be fair. Welcome to Edinburgh. Pretty sure I actually read somewhere that if the runway is contaminated, that you're supposed to use auto brake two or auto brake uh, medium, which would make sense. I think I've uh, might have mentioned this once before on the channel, but when I flew into New York um, in real life about a year and a half ago, it was like stormy and rainy and horrible and everything, and yeah, the um, the guy that flew it like. There was no mercy on his braking. It was literally the most powerful braking I've ever felt in any aircraft in my life. To the point where I was like, had my hand and feet on the seat in front of me, thinking I was about to just like wreck someone. Nevertheless, good fun. And we actually did get a Atsu message on the way in to tell us which stand we were supposed to go to. Arrival stand 9. That's good to know. So we can actually get GSX to prep that. There we go. And that's where we'll be heading. Turn the APU on. Project Fly, the landing rate was minus 184. Not that anyone should really care about landing rates, but people tend to do. Let's have a look. There we are. That was our approach path. Let's 
Someone else is there as well. Flybe. Don't know if they're going to survive either. Don't know if you've been reading the news, but uh, they're not doing so well. Trying to be bailed out with a hundred million pound tax bill or something to keep them afloat. Which is sad because I have a couple of friends that work for Flybe. And, uh, you know, they'll be out of a job. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that the aviation industry is in such a pilot shortage that they'll be able to get another job very quickly. But when you've already settled in somewhere, you know, in, in a town or in a city or whatever, and then you have to move because your airline that you worked for went under and you could only find a new job in a different city or a different town, that sucks very much. So let's just hope that that's not the case. Right, anyway, we're stand nine. Ooh, I think I went past it. Actually, I might be okay. I just do a really hard lock here. I might have just saved this. Just about. Good old turn radius. Oh, come on, just roll forward. You can do it. Just a bit of power. I mean, I could just stop it here, to be honest, and it would be fine. I'll do. I'm not chancing it anymore. Right, parking brake set. Oh, what the hell? Um, okay. That was awkward. I wonder how I make it, like, deep borders now with this new thing. It's almost like I've got to do it manually now. It's really odd. So I'm just doing something wrong. The hell? External ground shocks, that's all I want. Connect, there we go. And there we have it. Another flight in the bag, the first one of 2020. And to be fair, it's actually a really nice add-on. Um, the GSX integration thing, I mean, you can't really blame FS Labs for that because it's probably GSX. Let's face it, GSX doesn't have the best track record of working as software, as far as software goes. Um, so I'll keep an eye out for uh, any fixes that I can find on the, uh, on the GSX or the... Uh, or the FS Labs forum, or it could be the fact that I've done it wrong, or maybe they've changed the way that you do it. I'm, I'm really not quite sure, but that was good fun. I suppose I should file this on uh, Project Fly. Uh, in terms of content, um, I, there's no point in promising like videos every day, every week, every year. I, I, there's, there's no point. I've, I've so much to do. I just uh, make this, you know, make videos as and when. Um, I feel up to it, but I tell you what is is hugely helpful is um, the way I normally pick what uh, videos to make is um, I tend to go onto my YouTube like comments manager and I look at the um, like the last couple of videos and I look at any requests that have been made that have been uh, thumbs up. So if you've liked the video or if you've liked a comment, let's say someone said, "Hey, can you fly from Jeddah to Riyadh?" That was a popular one back in the day um 
and a bunch of people upvoted that or liked it, then I would kind of go with that. It's, it's just easier to, to get a feel for what people want. Um, naturally, that's not always going to be the case, but it gives me a, a good indication of what people want to see. So, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you, uh, as I said before, hope you had a good new year, and I hope uh, you enjoyed your Christmas or holidays or whatever you celebrate. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you soon. Turn off for now.